So guys, if you can, please subscribe to the channel. Please like this video and please share this with everyone. So guys, in this next story, a gang who kidnapped two men, put them into a van, beat them with bats and threatened to cut off their fingers and ears have been jailed for a total of over 44 years. Mason Shubella is 20, Harry Pierce is 22, Reese Spears is 23, Ricky Fiddler who's 21 and Laura Watson who's 46 all played their part in a terrifying kidnap which saw two men bound with cable ties and forced into a van on the 1st of July last year. One victim managed to jump out of the van to escape while the second was subject to an ordeal lasting over three hours. Both of the victims did not speak English as their first language and one was so terrified he ended up jumping out of the moving van on the coast road in order to put an end to the ordeal. After exiting the van in front of shocked passers-by, the victim, who was still tied up, hit his head on a parked vehicle and was in a coma for around a week afterwards. The kidnap left two victims with serious injuries and one even had their hair cut with scissors during the incident. One victim said he had been tortured to near death by members of the gang and was told to contact family members in Vietnam for a ransom during the van journey on Thursday. The five defendants appeared at Newcastle Crown Court to be sentenced for kidnap with the other defendants facing other serious charges. Shubella of Walker also appeared to be sentenced for conspiracy to supply cocaine. Spears was also sentenced for assault occasion actual bodily harm. Fiddler was sentenced for dangerous driving and Pierce was also sentenced for assault occasion actual bodily harm causing serious injury by dangerous driving and aggravated burglary. So the court had heard that the planned and serious kidnapping which involved all of the defendants at some points happened on the 1st of July last year when Shubella, Pierce, Spears and Fiddler burst into a home on Chatham Street in East Howden carrying knives and bats. Two victims known by their nicknames Harry and Eddie were inside at the time and had their glasses smashed. One also had their hair cut as part of the humiliating and frightening incident. The prosecutor, Gavin Doig, said both victims were bound with cable ties. The ankles were also tied but were later cut off. They were forced into a van and driven around for some time where they were threatened with scissors held to their fingers and knives to their throats. As the victims were driven around North Shields, things took a dramatic turn when the victim known as Harry jumped out of the moving van on the coast road in Wall's End while still tied up. The prosecutor said, at the time, with such fear, he jumped out of the moving van and sustained serious injuries after hitting his head on a parked car. Members of the public rushed to the victim's aid, who called the police and cut the cable ties. He was then rushed to hospital and was in and out of consciousness after fracturing his skull and sustaining a bleed to the brain. The court heard that Spears and Pierce had been seen in the van at the Walls End B&Q where cable ties were bought earlier. Fiddler had also been seen behind the wheel of the van whilst Shubella was a passenger the court heard. During the van journey, the prosecutor told the court that one victim was hit in the head of the bat whilst a man asked for money. The kidnappers also threatened to kill the victims before Shubella, who was on a curfew at the time, and Fiddler got out of the van and went home. The court heard the two went home minutes before the first victim jumped out of the van. After the man jumped out of the van, the vehicle and the remaining victims were taken to the home of Spears, where his eyes were covered with a hoodie. Pierce and Spears remained with the victim before Watson turned up. The victim was then put in a car and was assaulted further by the two men whilst being driven to Blythe by Watson. After the man jumped out of the van, the vehicle and the remaining victim were taken to the home of Spears where he had his eyes covered with a hoodie. Pierce and Spears remained with the victim before Watson turned up. The victim was then put in her car and was assaulted further by the two men whilst being driven to Blythe by Watson. Once in Blythe, the man was released on the street before he called for a taxi from a newsagent. The court heard that the van was later burnt out that same night but the cable ties that had been used were later found in the Chatham Street address along with hair clippings. A day after the kidnapping, Fiddler was seen driving a transit van which was also connected to the kidnapping and an extremely dangerous police chase ensued. The chase had to be abandoned twice due to the way he was driving and the van was later found abandoned. The defendants were all arrested in July and August last year, the court heard. So in a statement, the victim who jumped out of the moving van said he was tortured to near death by the gang and was in coma for seven days afterwards. He added he now suffers from PTSD and anxiety. 
The second victim said he now battles frequent nightmares. Prosecutor said there were sustained assaults and threats made with elements of humiliation during the incident. The court heard that Shubela will also be sentenced for conspiracy to supply cocaine between March 11th and July 16th, 2020, when he was involved as a runner in a drug dealing operation which involved 26 kilos of cocaine. He was only 17 years old at the time. Pierce also appeared to be sentenced for causing serious injury by dangerous driving, which occurred weeks after the kidnap. Prosecutor said Pierce was behind the wheel of a Toyota driving at speed when he smashed head on into a woman who was driving to work. Pierce, who was under the influence of cocktail drugs at the time, was banned from driving and made off but was found a short time later. The woman sustained a fractured eye socket and now may walk with a permanent limp. She also lost a job as a care manager due to the crash and said it had a devastating impact on her life. The court heard that Pierce had also been involved in an aggravated burglary on November 19, 2022, when along with other intruders, he burst into a man's home while holding a meat cleaver. The victim in the incident sustained a nasty laceration to his arm and Pierce's trainer was actually left at the scene which linked him to the incident. So the defence for Shubella, who was on bail awaiting sentence for the drugs conspiracy at the time of the kidnap, said he's a still young man and he is baby-faced. Speaking of the drugs conspiracy, he said Shubella had no criminal contacts or money to finance or operations such as this and that he'd been sleeping in a room above a boxing club before meeting other members of the conspiracy. Addressing the court around the kidnapping, his defence said Shubella left the van before the first victim jumped out and was at home by the time it happened. He said he was not involved in trying to cover up the activity and had grown up in care until he was 16 years old. He said he had the potential to be a good professional boxer saying he wants to put this all behind him and he wants to proceed with becoming a professional boxer. The defence for Fiddler said he had pleaded guilty to the offences and that he had shown remorse and considerable impact on the victims. She said he acknowledges the victims must have felt terrified. She said Fiddler got out of the van soon as Shubella and was not present when the first victim jumped out. She added Fiddler has ADHD and had a troubled childhood and has profound sorrow and shame for his actions. The defence of Spears said he had a very hard life and he had turned to drink and drugs after his mother had a stroke. He said he is shocked and disgusted and can't stop thinking about the man jumping out the van. He says I wish I could turn back time. He added Spears had taken drugs since the age of eight and had a chaotic childhood. The defence for Pierce said he had been taking far too much drugs and alcohol before the incidents and doesn't have a clear recollection of them. He added Pierce also had a chaotic childhood has never ever had a job and had associated with the wrong sorts of people. And the defence for Watson said her position was wholly different from the others and said she had been instructed by Spears to attend his address. He said it was crystal clear she was not involved in any threats, violence or humiliation. And he added that Watson treated Spears like a surrogate son and that the offence was completely out of character for her. And since Shibella was given 11 years and 9 months in a young offenders institution. Fiddler was jailed for 10 years and banned from driving for 9 years and 6 months and he must also undertake an extended retest if he wants his licence back. Spears was jailed for 7 years and 4 months. Pierce was jailed for 12 years and 8 months and was banned from driving for 11 years and 9 months. Again he must undertake a retest if he wants his licence back. And Watson was jailed for 25 months. Guys, this is a new story coming from Northumbria is absolute madness. Let me know what you guys think. It's your boy GC. Keep it locked, keep it real.